Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. It's April 2021 and we're doing a full navigation tutorial in the T45C Goshawk free mod that's just come out. We have three types of navigation in this aircraft. INS GPS, which is one system, is waypoint based. TACAN, tactical air navigation system, and ILS, instrument landing system. The first one, INS GPS, in terms of adding, deleting and manipulating waypoints at first release can't be done from inside the aircraft. It can only be done from the mission editor here. So you'll just use your normal tools to add, delete and manipulate the waypoints in the mission editor. They will then be automatically fed through to the aircraft when you get in the mission. In the months to come they will add functionality so that we can change them in the aircraft and I'll follow up with a video then. Once we get in the aircraft, we will look at the symbologies we have to navigate those INS GPS waypoints. Next, TACAN. We will use this to A, get to Cobuleti to land, and B, get on the runway radial to land. So we'll be doing a radial merge with the TACAN and course line. Out of interest, we can see the TACAN station for this Cobuleti with this icon here. This is in the Caucasus, by the way, and it's on a TACAN channel 67 X ray Morse code identifier Kilo Bravo Lima. ILS, I will show once we're in the game. And now let's pause it. Once we're in the mission, we can now go and find the ILS information on Cobuleti. Click on it there. We have ILS on runway 07 and a frequency of 111.50 megahertz. Morse code identifier India Kilo Bravo. So note that all down in our notepad back in the aircraft. First, let's look at the INS GPS waypoints. The way we will set this out for navigation is ADI on the left, HSI on the right. Attitude Director Indicator, also used for ILS. Horizontal Situation Indicator, used for INS GPS and TACAM. Basic Symbologies. Auto, currently not in use. Sequence, currently not in use. Scale, changes the scale in nautical miles between us, we are in the middle there, and the edge of the compass rows. 40 miles, 20 miles, and so on. Waypoint offset, currently not operational. This here shows the current selected waypoint, the heading from us to it, and the distance to it. We currently have waypoint zero selected, which is our starting waypoint. We can cycle waypoints with up and down here. So waypoint one is heading of 013 degrees magnetic for 12.4 nautical miles with an estimated time of flight of two minutes. Waypoint 2, waypoint 3, waypoint 4, and waypoint 5 is a non-waypoint, and we can just keep going, but they're all blank. You can see the waypoints represented on the plan here as that symbol plus the number of the waypoint. Also, if we want the waypoint information to display on the HUD, which we do, select waypoint there, turn course off, we'll come back to that. Look in the HUD, we now have symbology saying 12.4 nautical miles to waypoint one. That's our distance. Also in terms of azimuth, we can see on the heading tape up here, this little down tick here. All we have to do to navigate to the waypoint is to marry this chevron here with that down tick. And let's just show you what that will look like. If we turn off course, you can see it goes to the right. Turn back on course, back on heading, sorry, is the correct terminology you can see we marry them up. That's how we'll get to waypoint one. And as we select a different waypoint, you'll see the down tick will move to the right. So that is basic waypoint navigation. Next, if we want to add a course line, which will be from the selected point of interest, in this case, waypoint two, we've got selected. Let's go back to waypoint one. We can click on course there, and we can add this course line in a magnetic bearing, like with that up and that down. That is the course there. Currently, we have to press these buttons and the UFC doesn't seem to work at the moment. Turn that off for now. Also, we have a heading marker, which will be from us. Heading, you can see this little double notch line here, which shows our heading and we can select it with again up and down with this magnetic heading here. We'll turn that off. If we want to go and edit the waypoint information from inside the aircraft, we'll go to data, but that's currently not implemented. ADI just goes through to the ADI here. CDI and plan. Plan is just your basic top-down view plan. CDI, course deviation indicator. So if we have a course line on, like that there, we click CDI. This symbology is standard aeronautical symbology to show you how far you are away from the selected course line. And we'll come back to that when we're using it. This shows our current ground speed in knots. This here, we don't think is functional at the moment. Compass rows around the outside. 
Our current heading will be wherever on the compass rows this tick points to. Our current navigation pointing line is a little triangle here. So whatever we have selected as our navigation point of interest, currently waypoint 1, or it could be waypoint 2, you will have, if I turn my course line off for simplicity, this arrow pointing to it. And this, the tail, the reciprocal here. So if we wanted to head to it, we'll turn right. And then this arrow, once it merges with the 12 o'clock position, means it will be heading towards that navigation point. Next, let's add a TACAN station. So, TACAN panel here, on. Left click and right click to change tens of units, single units. We're now tuned to 67 X-Ray, which is our Cobuleti station. We can change over from our INS GPS to TACAN via that box there. We can see the TACAN station there, about 20 miles away. We can see our TACAN pointer being that arrow there on the outside of the compass rows and the reciprocal there, the tail. You can see that we can see our currently selected waypoint there at the same time as our TACAN station there. But you can only have either the waypoint or the TACAN station boxed in terms of navigating to. So you can't navigate to the TACAN station and the waypoint at the same time. Obviously, you know, there would be no point of doing that. When we have a successful TACAN tune, we can see a magnetic heading from us to it, 050 or 19.3 nautical miles, and a time of travel of 4 minutes 49 with current parameters. Next, we'd like to set up the ILS. So, ILS is this panel here. Make sure we turn on, so you can see a small arrow pointing to power, and we can change the, the uh, megahertz units here to 111 with left and right click. Then, cycle here left and right click to change the decimals to 111.50 now I don't know any way of checking at this point that we've tuned in to the ILS station we will know when we get within parameters because we will gain symbology on the ADI so let's talk about how we're going to do this navigation so we're finished with the INS waypoint system now showed you everything you need to know at the moment we're going to navigate to Cobuleti here via the TACAN, but not just to it. We need to get to it on the correct course line or runway radial. We need to see what that radial is. We're going to zoom in here. I'm going to grab this tool here. I'm going to draw a line down the runway. And that tells us that and that runway is at a true course of 0, 070 degrees. Bearing in mind that we have from true to magnetic variation in this part of the world at this time in history of about six degrees, we will subtract six degrees to give us 0, 064 magnetic course for this radial. So what I'm trying to say here is that if the radial of the runway is something like that, rather than going to the base in that radial, we want to first get to that radial merge with the radial and then head towards the base on the radial all using our TACAM. Once we get within about six or seven miles roughly at the right altitude we'll be on the glide slope. If we get to that glide slope correctly then the ILS will take over from there. So we need to plug in our course from our selected TACAM station. TACAM station is selected course of I think we said 064 magnetic. Lovely. That's it. We can unpause now and get flying. So we're going to fly roughly northbound to intercept that radial there, that course line. Now there are two methods of doing that to intercept it or, or do a radial merge. That is either we can use the plan here and or we can use the course deviation indicator. The way the course deviation indicator will work is that the closer we get to that course and being on course means that we're A in the right direction and B actually along that course line then the course deviation indicator which is this line here will get closer to the center. Currently it's off to the left meaning that we are right of the course line. We can swap between those two selectors all the time knowing that that is the runway there, that triangle international TACAN symbol. In terms of altitude, once we are 10 miles away from the runway, we want to be at 300 feet per mile out. 300 times 10 is 3,000. That means we want to be at ASL 3,000 feet with our barometric altimeter zero to the runway or the altimeter not zero and add on the altitude of the runway above mean sea level. In this case, it doesn't matter because the runway is basically sea level. Off we go. So we're going to work our way down to uh, 3,000 feet. We're going to check out our course deviation indicator. You can see it's moving in. So we're going to start turning to merge with that radio now. We know that radio is going to be about uh, 064, I think it was, isn't it? 
In terms of um, speed, it's going to be our normal approach speed, which in this aircraft is stated in NATOPS of 250 knots airspeed. A little further now, it's all about balancing our current rate of turn with that CDI in the HSI. And I am absolutely not the best at it, but I'll do my best. Distance, 15 miles, a little high still. Look at our CDI, it's almost merged with our pointer and we've got it perfect there. We're going to level out, in fact let's just pause it there. We can see that we are pointing towards the Takan station because these guys have pretty much merged. We can see that we are also on course because our course, indication, our course deviation indicator is pretty much flush with the main line which is all pretty much flush with the 12 o'clock position. We just need to turn right a tiny bit more. We can go back to plan now. We're now just going to turn right a bit, line everything up perfectly. We're going to be using the HSI over the HUD here. Okay, there. Next, our first piece of ILS symbology has arrived. We can see that. Our localizer has appeared. That is this top to bottom vertical line here. It's telling us that because it's left of the velocity vector we need to turn left to marry up with it. Well that's a bit strange because according to our HSI our Takan station is directly on the nose. Now one thing I've learned through all my years of simulated flying is that always trust the ILS over the HSI so that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to trust the ILS and I'm going to pull left to marry up with it. Speed is still 250. Altitude, 11 miles. It should be 3,300, which it is. That's all fine. What we're going to have now is that localizer moving in. And we are going to merge with that localizer in the center of our velocity vector. 10 miles, which should be 3,000 feet, so we're slightly under. I haven't actually seen the base. If anyone sees it, oh, there it is. Let me, there it is. So we still need to head left of the base in this case. This is all IFR symbology, obviously, you won't need this for a uh, uh, visual approach. We're eight miles, which means we're 2,400 feet, so we're just slightly below that, which is going to be okay. But we're still waiting until this localizer merges with our velocity vector. Which we're just about to do. Uh, we're seven miles times 300 is uh, 2,100, we're still 100 feet under, so we're going to gain a little bit more altitude. Okay, we are now going to ensure that a localizer merges with our velocity vector and stays there is the most important thing. And we've got the added bonus of being able to see the runway, which allows us to cheat a bit, but that's fine. Okay, we're at six miles times three is 1800 feet. We're bang on there. Now, the next piece of symbology has arrived the glide slope. Once we're in six miles, we get a glide slope. That is this horizontal line here. Again, we want it centered in our velocity vector. So we're now going to completely ignore our HSI. The HSI has done its job. It's got us into position where we can catch the glide slope symbology, the ILS. Now we switch to the ILS symbology. So as well as the symbology here, we have a repeater here in case we want to fly completely heads down or our HUD is gone, for instance. And we can fly with the localizer there and the glide slope there and our watermark here, which basically means our velocity vector, which is that point there. That's it. So we're going to fly the approach now. I'm going to do it on the HUD so you can see it's pretty in fact why when we do it down here so we can fly the whole thing if you like heads down from our ADI here keeping the watermark centered on the symbology that we've looked at speeds gonna come down to uh, landing speed uh, on the uh, onto our on speed sorry I should say three miles they land the glide slope now because as I'm uh, naturally starting to lose a lift, so at this point we're going to go gear down. We're going to go flaps down. Uh, go back to the HUD, marry the two. You can see I've slipped off now, which would just be flying badly, I'm afraid. I need to get left to get that localizer back in line. The glide slope's pretty good. Also, we've got to think about our uh, angle of attack error symbology. Check our gears down. Yes, it definitely is. So we've got to get our error bracket in line vertically with our velocity vector. We've got to trim it out so we're on speed trimmed. Look at our angle of attack indexer here. Make sure it's the circle and it is. And line the velocity vector up on the runway. And this should all be done IFR without any visibility of the runway. Well, that's a bit advanced for me. I've gone too slow. There we go. That's everything there lined up pretty nicely. Now in the last few couple of hundred of feet, we'll switch from, even in IFR, we'll switch from the ILS symbology to the... Uh, to a visual obviously that we'll see the lights at some point of the runway 
Now I'm going to land. Like this. Boom. Cut. Break. And that's it. So, that's shown. At the moment, the functionality we have for adding and navigating waypoints. How to use and navigate to attack and station on a force radio to get us in the position that we need to be to pick up the ILS glide slope. Then use the glide slope symbology, heads up or heads down, to navigate to the runway, to which point we take over BFR and land. I hope that was useful and see you later.